Good morning, folks. Welcome back. Global activity surging on our star. Solar wind enhancements on the way. We've got an observer-style science slap and a bravissimo for a climate-forcing study. But we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 48 hours on the sun, entering a much more eruptive sequence. Despite CMEs leaving four areas on the sun, none of them are headed at Earth. But the solar wind from the coronal hole will arrive within 24 hours and could spark more minor geomagnetic activity. But things are relatively calm in geospace for the moment. We've got to keep our eyes on the eruptive plasma filaments on the sun, as there are several facing Earth today, and as you can see, its friends across the star have been in exodus mode. Let's come to one of the worst articles I've ever seen in EOS, and the request to discuss it comes from one of our friends at the National Weather Service. Oof, he was right. The article title is just the appetizer of this, please ignore how bad we are at this meal. The reason we focus so much on uncertainty, bias, and oversensitivity is because they are so large, you really can't take their conclusions for much of anything. Whether it's the baffling southern ice gains, the recoveries of the northern ice immediately following large melts, or the fact that, depending on where you look at the coastline, there is sea level rise or a drop in sea level. They're constantly surprised and changing their numbers around and folks, while I don't intimately know the entire U.S. coastline, I do know Several places have seen no change, and 100% of the places, like in Virginia, where docks are going under, is due to isostatic post-glacial rebound land sink. They want you to ignore uncertainty because it shows how bad they are at this. But round the other side, we've got an excellent piece here on the major solar storm of 2004. This was one of the clear examples of polar excitement near the aurora, propagating to the tropics and equatorward traveling waves. This one saw the chemical modulation from the poles down to the equator, and they could trace that activity, giving us another happy opportunity to bring in the new animation of those global waves beaming solar forcing energy across the entire atmosphere. Folks, the solar forcing of the terrestrial climate, short-term storms, earthquakes, human health, technological failures, and an introduction to catastrophe can all be found in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. New batch coming, just allow about a week to ship. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.